Yeah, this is a two year. That wasn't mine. No, that wasn't yours. Good evening, everybody. Today is March. Uh, 27th, Monday, and this is a special meeting of the Moscow City Council. With that, Gina? Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Gina. Uh, and we'll start with uh, item number one, which is a change in the meeting schedule this evening. And I'll let City Supervisor Gary Reedner explain what's going on. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, as you can see from the agenda, I was approached by the mayor this morning, uh, who is an avid uh, basketball. college basketball fan. Yes. <laughs> uh, and traditionally, the Final Four game has always occurred. The National Championship game has always occurred on the Monday of a city council meeting. Uh, in this case, because of the situation where we have two Northwest teams, amazingly enough, in the Final Four and could potentially play one or both uh, in that title game, uh, our attendance at city council, uh, the mayor pointed out, might be uh, pretty sparse. So with that, uh, he approached me and uh, asked that I amend the agenda in order to uh, determine if the city council under Moscow City Code um, would cancel that meeting on April 3rd and set a special meeting for April 4th to take place at 7 o'clock in these chambers. Again, the reason for the good faith reason for amending the agenda is until uh, things went on this weekend, uh, it was impossible to judge who was going to be there and how that would affect attendance at the meeting. So with that, uh, there are two actions that need to take place. One is that the agenda be amended, and the second is to discuss the agenda item. Don. I would uh, move that we <clears throat> Do we have to agenda? Uh, Got to approve the agenda. John. Approve the agenda. Uh, change and also uh, I would move that we cancel the regular city council meeting scheduled for April 3rd 2017 and schedule, <coughs> schedule a s special city council meeting for Tuesday April 4th 2017 uh, if you could split that if we if the council would consider that uh, as two separate agenda items That'd or be two fine. separate votes That'd be two separate motions separate motions and he made two motions at one time. Yeah. I'll second both of those motions. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got two motions on the table. Would anybody like to discuss it before I call for a roll? Gary, Walter. Gary, do you need a stated reason for the amending the agenda? No, just that uh, for the good faith reason stated is, is sufficient. Okay, so you'll handle that in a minute. Okay, okay the first motion uh, that we're going to vote on is um, the amended meeting schedule this evening. I'll start the roll with Walter. Aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Aye. Okay, the second motion, which is a cancellation of the April 3rd meeting and the rescheduling of a special city council meeting on Tuesday, April 4th at 7 o'clock. That will be this motion that we vote on now. I'll start with John. Aye. 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 And just for the record, too, and you got that, um, Lori, that both motions are made by John and both seconds were made by Jim. Okay, with that, we'll go on to item number two. Thank you, everybody. And, yes, I, it is true. I am an avid NCAA basketball fan. I love watching basketball. So two time, first time ever in the history of the NCAA where two West Coast teams are in the Final Four. So that's a big deal for everybody, I think, in the Northwest. With that, Gary, I'll move on to item number two. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> the first item, uh, or item number two on the agenda, is the receipt and acknowledgement of the CAFR uh, 2015 CAFR uh, evaluation by the Government Finan Finance Officers Association. Uh, our comprehensive annual financial report has been submitted uh, 13 times for the award. Uh, it's given in the um, <clears throat> It's a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Uh, as I said, it's been submitted 13 times. We've been fortunate to uh, have received the award 13 times. Uh, in the packet, you see the information upon which the award is based. 
uh, the evaluation criteria, so on and so forth. I think you'll agree, and Mayor Lambert has uh, personal knowledge of this, when we uh, traveled to San Francisco about eight years ago now yep. in order to receive a bond rating for our sewer bond issue, um, they relied heavily on the CAFR and um, the bond underwriters looked at it and awarded us a very favorable bond rating. So it isn't just an award from a national association. It's something that's used in our investments and our bond ratings. So it's uh, extremely important. And with that, I have the award. I would like to have the mayor present that to the finance department. And we have Sue and Sarah here uh, to receive that. So if we could do that, and I will go man the camera. <coughs> Please come up, Sarah Banks, <laughs> our Assistant Finance Director, and Sue Nelson, who has been absolutely marvelous in helping out this past year. Brought her out of retirement, and look what she's done. She's up to start in a big way. Window, it's going to be off the right. I'm going to sit come on, be in between you two. Can I get you to step over on the wall to glare off the light? Off the man building. <laughs> Sarah's a lot taller than the man. <laughs> she is on, yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, you do. Oh, there you go. You do look very tall. That's the one. Look closer, walk in one place. Thank you. I'm shorter now. Tell us when. One, two, three, smile. Figure out how to remember. Oh, there we go. Smile. <laughs> so not the way Sarah works. Oh, for crying out loud. Maybe it's out of film, Gary. Quick, rearrange. <laughs> Sue, Sue, rearrange. 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 <laughs> Gary, you're an iPhone. Yeah, move. Well, I heard something. Let me look at it. What's that? Let me look at it. There's a little man in there that runs Zach would come out of the back. Is Zach, come out of the back. Exactly. Here, here, Gary, just use an iPhone. Help, help, Zach. Okay, Zach, why won't this thing work for me? Well, let's take a look. That Jack, he can do anything. Oh. Here, here's the guy that's really our expert in this. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh <laughs> yay, Zach. Okay, Turn on the power. Get another, get another one or two. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Save the day. Yeah. Go back. Go back to the lessons, Gary. Yay! Finance. A comment that I would like to make, and we've had uh, the finance department, and it's been led by Gary, but um, Sarah Banks, our assistant finance director, as well as Sue, has been huge. Sue Nelson this last year, and it's been. So nice to see and read some of the th reports and different things uh, that are very easy to read and uh, not complicated and simplistic. And that's, in my view, how it should be, so it's very understandable by all of us. So with that, Gary, we'll move on to uh, – well, there's no motion we need on this other than just accepting no, that, sir. correct? And we accepted that word gladly, so we will move on to the next item, which is the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report presentation, Gary. And you have the podium, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the chance for uh, the city finance team to present the audited financial statements for the work that was done in the fiscal year ending uh, September 30th, 2016. Uh, we're honored again to have personnel gauge. Nick Nicholson, uh, an auditor from their firm, is here to give his annual presentation. Uh, happy to report that as he will report to you, uh, we've been uh, the recipient of a Used to call it unqualified. Now it's n unmodified uh, <laughs> audit report. So that's again good news, as uh, we will be submitting the uh, this current audit and uh, CAFR to uh, the GFOA as well to see if we can continue that string of awards. So with that, I will uh, ask Nick to come give his presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Welcome, Nick. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'll go ahead and just uh, dive right in. Uh, like Gary said, my name is Nick Nicholson. Um, I've been with 
Presnell Gage Accounting for uh, going on 12 years now almost. Um, so, uh, and, and have been a part of this audit for, I believe, 10. So, um, so very, very familiar with it, and it, it's good to see all, some new faces this year, actually. So, I think the last two or three, I, I have not had any new faces. So, um, with that being said, what we're going to kind of go through this is um, just some financial highlights. We'll do some comparative analysis um, as part of this, but also primarily just to give you the results of the audit and, and really um, the idea behind what an audit is. So, um, as Gary was talking about, the CAFR, basically the published comprehensive annual financial report. Um, that that part is the CAFR itself is governed by the um, GFOA, the Government Finance. Um, Office of Accountability, and, and and basically they they require a certain amount of of detail in a regular financial statement that is submitted to them that is above and beyond what your normal financial statements have. Um, that includes I items like statistics uh, of the area and, and like ten year comparisons and those type of things, in addition to just the basic financial statements that are submitted to them. And so that's when you hear the term CAFR, that's really the difference between the CAFR and just your regular governmental financial statement. Um, basically, the layout and, and, and the information that's within a, um, the CAFR and just a regular financial statement is um, is governed by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, GASB. Um, and, and basically, it's governmental govern, or generally accepted accounting principles govern how we do our work and what we report. So. Um, as far as uh, what is in a financial statement and, and who is responsible for what, I like to tell everybody the information, the numbers, and, and the notes, and all of those items that are within the financial statements ha have nothing to do with me. They're the same things that you guys see from meeting to meeting. The information is not different. Um, it, it is put into a presentation um, uh, forum that, that is uh, subject to those standards that, that I mentioned before. Um, but the actual numbers are, are, are exactly what you see from a meeting-to-meeting -meeting basis. So the next question is, is then what is, what is my purpose as an auditor? And our responsibility is basically to perform tests uh, of those numbers and, and the information and the procedures that you're following and give an opinion on it. Um, we have multiple opinions with, within the financial statements, one being the, the presentation of the financial information as a whole, and then the other is on your internal controls um, over your financial reporting and compliance. Um, and actually this year there is one more additional item in that um, in a year where you expend more than $500,000 of federal financial assistance and actually going forward that is seven hundred and fifty. dollars um, when you expend that within a year of a federal grant or anything like that, we have to do an additional um, set of testing, which is called a single audit, which basically we're testing and providing an opinion on your federal grant programs um, individually. In all of those cases, we have given what's called an unmodified opinion, which is our highest opinion. Basically, it means the presentation or the, the financial statements and the internal controls as presented are uh, materially correct as far as we can tell from our testing. We, we did not find anything that would make us believe that the financial statements are misstated or that there is any procedures that are going on that we considered relevant enough and important enough to disclose to you um, that, that something is out of the ordinary. So, so that is our opinion, is, is that um, this is as clean as audit as we could, we could possibly um, give. So, so kudos to the finance department on that. And, and with that being said, I think we'll move um, directly on into kind of the layout and, and some of the information within the financial statement. So here is some, uh, if you've got the financial report uh, in front of you, here, here's basically kind of the table of contents and, mm -hmm. and how it's broken out. Um, I won't go into too much on that. Um, within the audited financial uh, statements, basically it's broken out and, and the idea behind the GFOA and GASB, they want to highlight your major funds. Um, so you'll see when it comes to your financial statements um, that there's two sets of financial statements. One that is um, a government-wide, basically it summarizes all your governmental activities and your enterprise activities, which enterprise, water, sewer, garbage, um, and, and basically everything else falls under your governmental. Um, then a second set of financial statements actually is um, on your governmental activities and breaks it out by what is major and what is non-major. Your major funds, um, and basically most of it is a calculation and its size of how much money is in these different funds 
um, and, and does it rise to the level of just being big enough? So your major funds, general fund, street fund, parks and rec fund, capital projects fund, and the Hamilton funds um, have risen to the level where they basically get to stand alone in their own column and report it separately. Everything else, the non-major is summarized kind of within the, with the statements, and those are your other uh, non-major funds um, listed there. And then your enterprise funds are generally separated as well. The general fund, um, basically what, what goes into the general fund is you look at your governmental funds and everything that is not required to be accounted for in another fund falls to the general fund. It's the catch-all um, of, of everything that is um, not special revenue um, and not specifically earmarked for, from another revenue source. And it's basically your chief operating fund. Um, special revenue funds, as I, I mentioned, basically they're to account for um, – funds that come from a specific revenue source that actually restricts how you spend those revenues. Basically, it's money raised and must be spent for the purpose of what that money was raised for. Um, obviously, Parks and Rec is a, is a perfect example. Um, you have fees from the Parks and Rec um, facilities that go right back into spending money to upkeep those facilities. Here's kind of a statistical, um, as you look at your fund balance, that's the operating funds. That's, that's what you have left over. That's your assets minus what you owe. Um, and basically, this is what you have available at the end of each year to operate. Um, and it's broke out by your major, these three kind of major governmental funds, general fund, street fund, and parks and rec. You can see kind of a rise in the general fund, and then this year was actually the first drop in, in this time period. And the primary reason for that is just transfers out of the general fund for some special projects. You transferred some money into major projects. You transferred some money into the parks and rec for um, current projects that occurred and some future projects. So that's kind of the, the trend where that dropped back down. As, as you can see, it was building up, and then uh, for the first time, um, you kind of cut into that fund balance a little bit. Now, the other funds that I mentioned, enterprise funds, basically, um, and these, these uh, actually operate on a different form of accounting when, when, when you look at this financial statement than your governmental funds. Governmental funds, I like to say, it's basically a budgetary basis that they operate on. Governmental funds, you know, you're really, it's more cash basis. You guys are more worried about, do we have the funds available, and, and are they within budget, and that's how you operate on. That's what you look at. An enterprise fund, when you're reporting that, it's required to be um, presented in more of a business-like fashion, um, which basically the reason behind that is GASB wants to look at these financial statements or have statements that they can compare to any business, to any area um, nationwide. They, they want to be able to look at this and say, does this make sense with everybody else? And so in this set of financial statements, when it comes to these enterprise funds, Items like uh, capitalizing assets, your big projects, and depreciating them. The, that, is, that is not a governmental um, fund style of financing. Um, and the same with debt. Debt goes on the balance sheet. It's not an expense when you um, send it out. Only the interest would be an expense. So that's the primary difference. When you see governmental versus enterprise, that's the difference between the two. As far as the water fund goes, you'll see here's kind of a trend of your, your revenue and, and expenses over time. You can see, as I mentioned before, this year there's a, a pretty good rise in your capital um, expense this year. You had several um, water projects, the well project, um, uh, the new well project it, it going into that to, to raise that up. So you can see revenue has kind of had a pretty steady incline, as you would expect, um, and, and really your Regular other expenses are kind of rising along with that, and you can see the only spike is really in that um, special capital expense. The net position, obviously, um, as, as those projects get to completion, they really don't break down the net position. It doesn't reduce your net position. You're really just contributing to that net position. And so it continues to rise even though you had higher expenditures than normal. Um, so it's, your, your net position continues to rise. Um, in the water. You can see the capital projects fund actually decreased, the amount reserved for capital projects kind of decreased because you did spend some of it and it actually goes into your regular operating um, net position. In the sewer fund, you can see um, the sewer fund, it, it is a pretty steady revenue source. Um, it, it rises slightly but not uh, massively. Um, not a bunch of uh, capital activity within the sewer 
projects this year. Um, and so it's kind of, over the last few years, you can see it's been pretty steady, um, no real spikes. Um, in 2013, that spike, uh, as far as expenditure was, you guys paid off some bonds um, in that year. So that's why that year went up quite a bit, is you guys um, refinanced some bonds at that time, paid off a major one so the expenditure comes out um, all at one big shot. So that's that spike there. Kind of, we talked about. This. So this here's here's just kind of a uh, outline of the net position as it continues to rise, um, and you guys are setting away some money um, for future capital capital projects. So that continues to grow here, as you can see. Sanitation fund, um, as you can see, the expenditures in the sanitation fund, uh, <clears throat> as the new kind of agreements with Latos Sanitation have kicked in, there has been some additional costs there, um, and, and you guys have budgeted for that, the revenues there as well, and so the, the fee increases have covered that. You can see the net position as far as just uh, regular sanitation has stayed fairly steady. Um, you are putting away some money for future projects um, in, in that arena and have been able to do so. As far as just some financial highlights uh, across the board, the, the city's government-wide net position um, had a about a 6.6% increase this year. Six, um, it went up by about $7 million to a total of 104 from about uh, 97 last year. Um, a lot of, the, basically this is split about 50-50 between governmental and um, this, the water or the water sewer garbage. Um, the water sewer garbage's climb has been due to the increase in, in revenues along with um, the major projects that were um, completed in, um, and started at, in, the, in this time frame. The governmental, um, it, basically it's, uh, as we talked before, we, we saw the, the increases there and as revenues continue to rise. Um, but you are stocking away a little bit for, for future capital outlay was uh, one, one area where you reserve some money. And so a lot of that increase isn't necessarily that more money went into the unaccounted or uh, the unreserved coffers. A lot of it was set aside for future capital outlay. And, and you can see there that next line, a restricted fund balance of, of 3300 that's in your governmental projects. Of that $3 million that's set aside, um, 85000 is for future debt payments, 293 is um, highway user tax, has uh, restrictions on what you can spend that for. And then $3 million, the remaining $3 million, 2.94, is for future uh, parks and rec projects um, that were basically money that you received from the Hamilton estate that is still set aside for future use. You can see that here's a list. I won't go through each of them. Here's some of your major uh, construction progress projects that went into place uh, this year. Some of it is still construction in progress. Some of it's been capitalized and um, completed. But um, So those are some of your major accomplishments this year. Um, basically on the business, the enterprise side, the water, sewer, garbage, your restricted fund balance has about $14,700,000 um, in the Primary uh, purpose of that, it, it consists of 13 for water, sewer, and sanitation capital projects and 1.6 for um, the bonds that are still outstanding for future debt payments. Um, you see you had two major water projects that I kind of mentioned before, the water well um, being one and the booster station being the other, and that's uh, primarily the, the biggest capital outlay expense that occurred in the water fund. Um, you can see there at the bottom, total government-wide operating expenses were up a little bit um, in, in this current year um, for, for those items. So still within kind of a, uh, the general area of where you have been spending, but up slightly. On the governmental side, the general fund, obviously, probably one of your more important items to, to track your, your general operating fund. Um, you can see your, your revenue has steadily increased as your expenses have increased. You can see there was a pretty uh, significant jump over the last couple years in just general government, and that is those transfers primarily that I talked about for, for projects, um, parks and rec um, and other capital projects that the, the general fund is, is supplementing, I guess. So here's kind of basically what falls into general government expenditures. <coughs> These are all of your, I guess, areas of, of expenditure, your legislative, your executive, your admin, 
finance, legal, human resources, um, and just general buildings and grounds, uh, community development, and then just other non-departmental, and that's where the, the transfers and other commissions between funds fall. <clears throat> the public safety, that this is your police and, and fire um, and other public health uh, services. And here's kind of some, uh, basically here's your public safety and your general government expenditures kind of uh, wh where they fall. So engineering, um, fire control, prevention, police obviously is your largest public safety expense. Um, a lot of that being <coughs> just salaries and, and those type of items you can see. Um, all of those have kind of steadily risen over time as you would expect, no major spikes. Um, on the governmental side, you can see, like we mentioned, uh, the non-departmental general on the 2015-16 have increased significantly um, in 15 and 16. And those are, almost all of those increases are the transfers to the Parks and Rec and the um, uh, projects fund for capital projects that have occurred. If I may. Yeah. So is Absolutely. that the Hamilton Fund? Is that what we're talking about? Is it the Hamilton? Some of it is the Hamilton Fund. Some of it is is the agreement with the, um, the school district. For, the, which is the Hamilton yeah, Fund. Which is, yeah, which yeah. is, yeah. Okay. And the airport fund. And the airport, okay. Yeah. And then as far as what falls under the culture and rec, um, obviously it's pretty self-explanatory. All of your parks and rec um, facilities, um, and, and is including the art as well. Um, you can see here uh, kind of a, this falls under the same realm as I was talking about with the water um, bonds. 2013 shows a large, large amount there, and there's two reasons for that. Um, one being that you, you refinance some debt in there, and that's in the uh, Parks and Rec Fund. And then the Hamilton uh, expenditure there was really large that year because I believe that's part of the baseball fields is where a lot of that money came from in that year. Yeah, 1.8 million. So, so that's the spike in 13. You saw those two items um, that really kind of skew um, from the other years. And you can see 14 had a little bit of carryover with, with regards to that Hamilton. As far as the street fund um, goes, you can see the street fund, it, it does get supplemented from other sources. Transfers help kind of keep this fund um, going. And so, so the revenue here, you can see another spike in expenses, and you did do several street project funds this year is why this was an increase over 15 and 16. So with that, I'm going to kind of let you chew on that. And if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to ask them at this time. Questions for Nick. Well done. That, that Comment, managed. I guess. <laughs> yep. Walter had his answer. Jim, how about you? Looks pretty straightforward to me. Mm -hmm. yep. Good job. Catherine? Nope. You know, uh, I read through, I spent a lot of time. I, one of my favorite things in life to do is read financial reports. I love it. It's Which is, yeah, it's usually drives right people you're, insane. You're, 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 but you're, I'm a numbers guy. I love numbers and stuff. I look through this stuff. So I spent about four hours on this over the weekend. Most of it I already knew anyway, but I just yeah. wanted to get refreshed on it. Yeah. And uh, I really like the job that our team in the finance department's doing. They're doing a terrific uh, job. Mary's leadership and Sarah's leadership as well, and the help of. Uh, Sue and others down there has been terrific, but I really appreciate this uh, very concise and well-written document. Nick. So thank you very much for yeah, the presentation. And I guess, uh, let's see, do we need to have some kind of a, this is just a matter of accepting this. So I would, I would uh, yes, I think so, for we can accept this. Jim. I would move to accept the City of Moscow audited comprehensive annual financial report for fiscal year 2016 as presented. Second. Okay, we got a motion by Jim and a second by Catherine to accept the City of Moscow audited a comprehensive annual financial report, report for fiscal year 2016 as it was presented this evening. I'll start the roll with Walter. Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you very much All right. for your presentation. Well, and if you allow me, uh, I'd just like to echo your sentiments as far as um, your staff in, in working with them. It's, it's fantastic. They do a great job. And, um, we, we enjoy working with them, and, and we don't have any 
any issues as far as is getting information and, and as an auditor that's that's one um, big boost to, to the work that we do is, is when we get somebody who knows what they're doing and, and does it well and um, and is willing to work with us. So well, Nick, we, we appreciate are, it. Well, we appreciate the job too, and our citizens deserve the transparency in what we do with our financial reports. That's very important for all of us up Absolutely. here. So, thank you. Okay, with that, we will move on to the next item. And this will be. Bill Belknap, the Moscow Urban Agency 2016 Annual Report. Bill, you have got the floor, sir, the podium. Thank you, Your Honor and members of the Council. Uh, as introduced, this is the annual report for the Moscow Urban Renewal Agency for the 2016 calendar year. Uh, under Idaho Code, uh, urban renewal agencies are required to provide an annual report to their governing um, board or jurisdiction, the empowering jurisdiction, um, by March 31st of each year. Um, and so for us, uh, that uh, governing body is the city council, and the report this evening is for the 2016 fiscal year. i just go over a little bit of the report organization. Um, it includes an overview of the agency, uh, agency profile, uh, a Overview of the Board of Commissioners for the Moscow Urban Renewal Agency, some identification of significant achievements that the agency occurred over the 16 calendar year, and then a description of agencies of the, of the districts of the agency. That includes the Alturas uh, Technology Park District and the Legacy Crossing District, as well as an inventory of agency-owned properties, and then it ends with our financial statements for the 16 fiscal year. Uh, as the, the council may be aware, the uh, Moscow Urban Renewal Agency was uh, formed and organized by the Moscow City, City Council in 1995. The purpose of the agency is to undertake urban renewal projects in the areas designated by the City of Moscow in order to improve the physical, social, and economic condition of the area and to improve the economic well-being of the community. The agency is comprised of seven commissioners on the board that are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by this body. <clears throat> Two members of that board are Moscow City Council members. So um, <clears throat> Council Member Weber and Council Member Betke serve in that capacity. Uh, one member is a Lata County Commissioner, and Commissioner Dave McGraw is that individual. And then four members are from the community or the citizenry at large. Um, currently on the Board of Commissioners for the agency, we have Steve McGeehan, who serves as the chair of the body, and Brandy Sullivan is vice chair with Art Betke as secretary. We also then have uh, Steve Drown as commissioner, Dave McGraw, John Weber, and Ron Smith that rounds out the board. Uh, they are a great board to work with, and they've been nothing but a pleasure since I've taken over the responsibilities of executive director. <clears throat> the agency's activities are directed within individual districts by specific urban renewal plans that are adopted and approved by the Moscow City Council. The agency's activities are largely funded through tax increment revenues where certain uh, taxes are diverted to the agency and are utilized to pay for public improvements and other revitalization activities within that district. The overall goal is to in incentivize private investment to help diversify and strengthen the local economy uh, of both the city and the county. Uh, when a district is formed, there is a base assessed valuation that is frozen, and then as new development and growth occurs, the tax revenues that are levied against that new development then are uh, transferred to the agency that is reinvested for public infrastructure to support private investment, and then at the end of that life of that district, which is currently limited to 20 years, that full tax base is then returned to all the taxing districts within the community. <clears throat> Some of the significant achievements for the agency in 2016, as you are all well aware, we've been working uh, for about two years now on the environmental remediation of the Six and Jackson property, and we are just now closing out that remediation process. That was a site that was previously utilized to store agricultural chemicals, primarily fertilizers that uh, had leaked into the soils and into the underlying groundwater. Uh, the agency received uh, assistance from the city through the coalition assessment grant to do environmental assessments and then also was a recipient of an EPA cleanup grant to help uh, fund the remediation of that site. Uh, we've removed a thousand cubic yards of soils from that site as well as installed um, three injection wells and four extraction wells to help treat that groundwater. Uh, we are now just coming out of that process through the voluntary cleanup program with the Department of Environmental Quality, and that has cleared the way for that site to move forward into private development, uh, which is scheduled to be the Sangria project uh, that's anticipated to start construction this summer. 
Uh, we've also partnered with a number of private development projects this year. Um, as you may be aware, the Legacy Crossing District was formed in 2008, which was really at the bottom of the recession. And there was not a great deal of activity that happened in the district since that time period. Uh, we are seeing both the national, state, and local economies recovering after the recession, and the agency board has partnered in $40 million of private development projects, funding needed public infrastructure, environmental remediation, and other assistance to try to facilitate those projects. And so we are now going to see both uh, through this year and into next year s significant construction activity happening within Legacy Crossing and significant private investment happening within the community, which is great to see. Uh, the agency also spent much of this last year working on a strategic plan to help provide direction and guidance to the agency's <coughs> activities, as well as increase public awareness of the agency's role in private <coughs> development and community improvement. Uh, that plan was adopted in the spring of this year by the board, um, and that is, uh, I think, will be a valuable tool for the agency moving forward in the f near future. Uh, as the council is aware, there have been two districts of the agency. The Alturas District was the first district uh, that was formed in 1996 and closed in 2015. And then the Legacy Crossing District here was formed in 2008 and will close uh, no, I guess, no later than 2032. Uh, Alturas Technology Park was, our, was the agency's first district and is home to many of Moscow's premier high-tech companies. At that time, it was established, as I mentioned, in 1996 with a base assessment of $6.4 million evaluation and improvements within that district in private development and investment increased property values by more than $20 million by 2014. The agency was pleased to be able to close that district out a year ahead of time. Uh, originally scheduled for close in 2016, we were able to close, retire our debt, and close off the district in 2015 and disperse back about $850,000 revenues back to the taxing districts with the closure of that district. The Legacy Crossing District, as I mentioned, was created in 2008 and is the second district within the community. It covers approximately 163 acres, um, primarily focused on the historical ag industrial corridor located between the University of Idaho campus and downtown. Uh, as mentioned, that was created here in 2008, and that best base assessment valuation is approximately uh, $48 million. And we haven't seen quite as much growth there. Uh, we are starting to see that, and we expect to see as these new projects come online to see that increment valuation grow fairly rapidly over the coming years. <clears throat> as I mentioned, there's approximately $40 million in private investment currently underway, including the Gritman Medical Office Building, Sangria Downtown, as well as Identity on Main and a few others. Uh, we're also required to provide an inventory of properties that, currently, that the agency currently owns. There are six lots within Alturas Technology Park located in Phase 2 of Alturas that the agency currently owns that are currently marketed for sale. <clears throat> and then there is the property at 6th and Jackson that was acquired by the agency to try to facilitate the Hello Walk pedestrian walkway and also will be the site for the Sangria development. Uh, so those are the seven properties currently held and owned by the Moscow Urban Rural Agency. Uh, turning to our financials, uh, first looking at revenues, uh, again, starting at the bottom, <clears throat> we do have investment earnings. These are earnings we, um, we earn on the agency's holdings that are invested in the various investment vehicles. Uh, generally, that runs around two to $3,000 per year, uh, so it's not a substantial source of revenue. We also have grant funding, and this is largely the EPA cleanup grant that we received. We had about $4,500 that was received in that grant in 15, and then about $145,000 that was received uh, for cleanup activities that occurred in 2016. <clears throat> the next line up are incre increment revenues, tax increment revenues for the legacy um, district. As you can see, we had some growth, and then there was a, a <clears throat> calculation error of that um, increment from the Latah County Assessor's Office, so we saw a little decline as that uh, correction of that calculation was made. And then we've begun to see that growth again uh, going up in 2015 and 16 and ending up at about 180000 And again, we expect to see that grow substantially with the projects that are currently underway. And then the Alturas tax revenues uh, from 2009 here to 2015 grew from about 330000 310000 up to about 407000 Then with the closure of that district, uh, no additional revenues uh, will be received by the agency. Corollarily, looking at our expenses, uh, starting here with general agency expenses, the purple line, uh, those have generally ranged between 77000 here to about 91000 uh, in 2015, and then declined about 33000 in 16 to 58000 
Uh, that really was a result of the transition of the executive director services. The executive director for the agency was previously a position that was funded jointly between the city of Moscow and the Moscow Urban Rural <coughs> Agency, and there were additional a fee for services the agency paid the city. Um, those services were combined into an amended agreement for services, and that ended up reducing the general agency operating expenses by about 33000 uh, Within Alturas, we had fairly low expenditures just with some maintenance obligations. There was a project in 13 to extend a sewer main that was identified as needing to be ex that should have been extended in the initial construction of Phase 2. So there was a $71,000 expenditure that occurred at that point in time. Uh, there were a few uh, pedestrian improvements and sidewalk repairs that were done in 2015. And then the large expense, uh, 849000 of the 854000 there in 2016 was the disbursement of the excess tax revenues with the closure of the Alturas District. So that was dispersed back to the uh, county office uh, for that to be uh, distributed to the taxing districts. The expense, well, yes, sir. Do you all know offhand how much of that Moscow City <clears throat> got? 25%? I don't know that number. Excuse me? The disbursement. No, what, what part of that 854? The, the, so, the city of Moscow got? I believe. How much? I believe it's 239000 if I recollect Thank you. correctly. The red line here indicates the expenditures within the legacy district. Uh, the large expenditure occurred in 2010 with the purchase of the Six and Jackson property, so the, those expenses were 479000 that year. Uh, since that time, they have uh, been fairly low. There were some expenses in 11 and 12 when there were some structures that were demolished off that property. Uh, and again, you'll see the expenditures start to climb here in 16 up to 169000 That's largely the environmental remediation uh, that is <coughs> funded by the EPA grant that the agency received. <clears throat> Occasionally, the agency uh, needs to borrow money in order to accomplish its goals and objectives. So this is the debt service. The top line here is the Alturas Fund debt service. So there were bonds both for the improvements of the construction of the, of the uh, subdivision as well as purchase of the property for Phase 2. That last debt service payment was uh, made in 2015 of 114837 which allowed for the closure of the district in 2015, and so there's no additional, there have been no additional debt service expenses in 2016. Uh, for the legacy fund, the debt service here for the bonds for the purchase of the Six and Jackson property have been about 43000 per year, uh, and that's been fairly continuous uh, over the last several years. <clears throat> Next would be our ending fund balances then after revenues and expenses. The bottom line here is the general agency fund balance. Uh, it's been about 45,000 or so and then ended in 16 at 77,875. Uh, that fund balance for Alturas had grown quite substantially until that district was closed out and those funds were dispersed back to the taxing district. So that has been zeroed out. And the legacy crossing fund balance has climbed up to about 525000 as of the 2016 fiscal year. And that leads us to our net position with uh, those uh, fund balances as well as other investments in value of land. Uh, the net position of the agency has been growing steadily over the last several years, uh, peaking in 2015 at about $2.3 million. And then with the disbursement of the 900 and, and, or 849,000 of the excess revenues in the closure of the Alturas District, leaves us with the ending net position of about 1.3 million uh, for the 16 fiscal year. Um, so anyhow, that's the end of the annual report. Uh, as required by statute, we did publish notice uh, that the report was available for public review and comment for two weeks prior to presentation to the uh, Urban Renewal Agency Board. Uh, and we did receive comments from Ms. Siever, and those have been incorporated in the document that is in your packet. And then uh, with that, I'd like to present this report for the Council's acceptance. Uh, one thing, Bill, and this has nothing to do with this report, but I think Council might, Ben, we have you here this evening, just take a few minutes and talk about the Southeast Industrial Park that we've been talking about in BURA. Can we do that just a little bit? It has nothing to do with this report. Sure. But I'd like to just give counselors kind of an update on where we're what that's looking like for us. So as the council may be aware, the city received a GEM grant in 2010 to develop a uh, concept plan for the development of a new industrial park. Uh, so the areas that were identified were in the south end of town on the east side of US 95 near the current Fountain Industrial Park. There was a, about a 70-acre study area that was explored, and there were concept designs that were developed for lots, roadways, utility constructions, and overall grading and cost estimation for the construction of that, in, of that industrial park. 
uh, through the strategic planning process that the agency conducted, we had the joint meeting between the city council and the agency board, and that was a point of discussion and ultimately ended up as a goal uh, within the agency's strategic plan to develop a new district in South Moscow to support commercial and industrial development. The agency has just begun that exploration, and so we have looked at the needs, uh, looking at the existing utility services, those areas that currently do not have uh, gravity sanitary sewer services, and uh, what we anticipated for future infrastructure needs. And we've kind of outlined a general area that would uh, include much of the south end of the community. Uh, so we we're just starting that process, and we our next phase will be to have individual meetings with property owners. <coughs> Uh, to discuss the district, what it means to them, answer any questions they may have, um, kind of understand their future plans for their property and help us refine what that ultimate boundary might look like. Uh, the council would, or the uh, board would then work on the preparation and development in conjunction with the city of a new urban rural plan for that area and present that for the council's consideration. Uh, that is something we have kind of targeted for completion by the end of this year. And so I would expect for you to hear more about that in the coming months. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Walter? Which side of 95 are you looking at? Both. Yep. John, you are part of the URA <clears throat> board. Yes. She's a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, <clears throat> there have been two or three things that we've done that I think are going to help us a lot. Uh, one was uh, the five-year plan that Bill alluded to to kind of keep us uh, focused in a direction that we all agreed would be the direction we would like to go. And then in addition to that, uh, the work that Bill has done as the director on trying to put together the uh, 6th and Jackson corner lot uh, sale and uh, construction of a business and uh, actually the fact that the e uh, Idaho uh, Environmental Protection Agency took the length of time it did to finally clear us uh, so that we could actually move ahead as an organization um, hopefully helped a lot with uh, the Sangria people putting together um, a project that we and they can both agree on. The reason I mentioned Sangria is that um, about two years ago we had a presentation by three different organizations. The, before, the board voted and we opted to take uh, the Sangria proposal and go with it. Uh, and so now they are in the position that they've got to come up with something uh, to move along, or if that doesn't happen, then we will probably have to go back to the drawing board. And uh, other than that, we were able to, like it was said, close out uh, Alturas, and we still have six lots out there we're trying to sell, and... Uh, Every time we get kind of close, something happens. But uh, it's being worked on, and uh, having Bill as our director and uh, having the oversight that we put on ourselves and the uh, uh, help and the cooperation from the city is moving us along, not as fast, like Bill said, as we would like, but we're making <clears throat> steps forward. And uh, I'm glad to be on the board, glad to be help. And uh, I think we will eventually uh, make Legacy Crossing um, as successful as Alturas was. It took a little while to get Alturas going. It's taken a little while. And then if we can continue on with the industrial park on either one or both sides <clears throat> of Highway 95, that'll be a big help, and what'll be even a bigger help will be getting the four lane from Thorn Creek into Moscow. That appears to be moving along, and that'll dovetail real well into what we're doing. 
Sure. Questions for Bill? Gina. Uh, Gina. I, just, I just have a statement. Um, I am so impressed with our urban renewal. Um, I, I must say that we have, have you know, a, a good long history, and I, I think we would be remiss if we didn't um, acknowledge some of the groundwork that, that our city supervisor did as the urban renewal, another one of the hats you got to wear all those years, um, but also the efforts that the two of you have done in showing the rest of the state how, a, how it really works and how it really works well. So I, I applaud you. I'm, I'm just so excited. I get to play along the edges um, of this. So, so thank you for your efforts. It's really showing everybody else how to do it right. Well, so, with that, you know, you. in addition to that, the, the whole board on the URA has yes. made some huge strides over the years for us. Yeah. Other questions for Bill? I, one yeah. question, Bill. If the Sangria uh, proposal does not pan out for financial reasons, or, uh, there's not a, one of the other two, the Anderson or the Gritman proposal, are not alternates. It would have to go back to you would look at three or however many new proposals would come to the table. We didn't select an alternate. I think the agency would probably go back out to an RFP because it's been so long. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it had been a fairly short time period, it's possible we could utilize that process to go to a second selection. Um, but it's been two years since we went through that process, and I, it would be my, my recommendation to the board that we go back through that RFP again. Thank you. Okay, well, I would, if everybody's done, mm -hmm. <clears throat> entertain a motion from somebody to accept the Murrah report. Your Honor, I move that we accept the 2016 <coughs> Moscow Urban Renewal Agency annual report. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion by Gina and a second by John to accept the Murrow 2016 annual report. We'll start to roll with Walter. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much, Bill, for that wonderful report. Well, that is the end of our agenda, folks. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So oh. moved, Your Honor. Before we do that, though, just a reminder, next council may be Tuesday night, April 14th, or 4th at <laughs> 7 p.m., not the 14th, the 4th. Okay, uh, Jim made the motion. Somebody second. Second, yeah. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, we are adjourned at 553. Thank you, everybody.